nestled into a dark corner by the river of the man known as Salvador Wicks, a claustrophobic vagabond who lived on the fringes of society, now a survivor in a world turned upside down. Separated from his sister during the beginning calamity, Salvador never thought he would hear from her again. But fate had other plans. A man on a journey found Salvador and delivered him a life-changing letter, written in his sister's unmistakable handwriting. It tells of a safe place, a commune, just south of Louisville, Kentucky, where many survivors had gathered together. With nothing but her prized bike and the bag on her back, we will set out on a journey through the abyss, where the dead walk the earth, where hope is the only thing that keeps us going. This is the Claustrophobic Nomad Challenge. The rules are simple. Only allowed to operate our prized bike. No other vehicles. The bike must reach the final destination. No sleeping inside buildings. We hate walls and desire the open air as much as possible. From the desolate landscape of the northern frontier, our odyssey commences. Our mission to navigate the treacherous path parallel to the river, forging our own way towards a new beginning. As our wheels tread the desiccated terrain, we embark on a daring descent through the heart of Kentucky, driven by dauntless determination to uncover our sister's elusive sanctuary. It had been many years since the outbreak deluged over the entire nation. All hell broke out at first. It was anarchy between the looters and the walking dead. Even before the outbreak, we were always getting into trouble. So when the world turned upside down, it was just another normal day for us. We lived by the river with our sister where we did whatever we pleased. Freedom was nice, but Amelia wasn't settled with selfish endeavors. She was a kind soul who desired to help others all her life. Before our separation, Amelia volunteered at a local homeless shelter in a nearby town cooking meals and treating their injuries. She taught us to always carry bandages just in case. Ripped clothing would have to do for now. We heard about what happened on the radio first. On a calm, warm day, the banjo in our hands still vibrating from the notes plucked happily. A wave of the dead, a clash of bullets, and a news flash that the world was never going to be the same. The nearby town had already been overrun, and the congestion of walking death forced us in another direction. But we'd held out hope all this time that she'd escape somewhere, somehow. Now after all this time, we gained proof that she was still out there. We didn't really need to think about it twice. We left the comfort of Riverside living, carrying only what we could carry, to be with the only person who's ever cared about us. In fact, it was Amelia who gave us this bike. We still have no idea how she managed to afford it. That brings us up to today. Now we're in a world where the zombie population has gone insane, and finding anything of value is insanely rare. We happily scavenge from those who cross our path, taking anything we deem useful. Ever since we crossed that barricade, the congestion of the walking dead has only gotten worse. It feels like we can't go five feet without having to fight our way through the grips of their hunger. But that didn't mean we couldn't enjoy ourselves along the way. We found it fundamental to live for the journey, not just the destination. This group of piñatas had a digital watch for us, so now we could finally see what time it was. You'd think after so many years we'd have taken a watch by now. Our plan going forward was pretty simple. We'd make our way to the river for easy access to food, and then push south toward Louisville day by day. We had limited capacity to bring extra things along, so we'd be looking for a specific few items. We only had a wrench and a screwdriver, and a few knives so we'd need to find a hammer or saw if we were going to become more self-reliant. We'd also like to find a tent for easy sleeping arrangements, as well as finding or making a campfire kit. These two items alone will fill half of our bike's carrying capacity. Each bag holds five pounds, and we currently only have two bags. We also have the capacity of any bags we can carry while driving, but this will put a lot of extra strain on us throughout the trip if we overload them. Luxury items like guns and sledgehammers will need to be considered very carefully. 
If we find a loaded hunting rifle, this would be an absolutely amazing find if B-42 was already out and we could use it for hunting. Right now, it's just a very heavy noisemaker. The old dilapidated death trap still had a few items inside. After clearing out the broken glass, we'll hop inside to take a closer look. But before we could, another small horde came to pester us. With that taken care of, we step back into the ever-shrinking box and find a very welcome surprise. A pack of smokes, some matches, a garbage bag, and a warm pop for the road. We still didn't have a bottle to carry water, so this would be a lifesaver if we find ourselves thirsty and too far from a water source. drive towards the old country store by the river, our expedition is once again impeded, this time by thirst and the dead. We take an opportunity to steal a drink as the horde around us begins to gather. The afternoon was already dragging on, and we needed to consider what we were going to do once night fell upon us. We needed to secure a spot to spend the night, and this horde was a bit bigger than we could easily dispatch. We'll attempt to use the trees and bushes to our aid. Ultimately, we end up just losing them out in the field and making a break for it in the other direction. We'll clean up any of the stragglers and continue towards the river. Our stomachs begin to growl after a long day of arduous stabbing. A package of gummy worms is a reward for cleaning out this building's pest problem, as well as a wonderful hammer, one of the many specific items we were looking for. The second floor was already completely wiped out. After a quick refresher from the tap, we'll make our way back into the open air 
and spot a place we might call home tonight. A rather sizable gazebo we can use to shelter us from the weather. In the middle of our fight, our trusty blade snaps in half, rendering it useless. We'll have to finish this one with our beat. Thankfully, we found plenty stabbed into the dead for us to use. On these loot boxes, a 22 lr pistol with a box of ammo awaited us cheerfully. A decent find, but with how weak this gun was, we'd likely leave it behind for the next survivor, since it would just weigh us down. As we approached the boarded-up tackle shop, a dreary rain began to stir, coating the area with the aromatic smell of springtime. We couldn't have found this area at a better time. Inside the tackle shop awaited a beautiful menagerie of items. A couple of tarps and a couple tent pegs, but not enough for a full tent. As well as a hand crossbow and a couple bolts, a weapon light enough that it might just come with us. Behind the counter, we found the rest of the prize we seeked, the final tent pegs we needed to make the tent kit for easier living. We also found a can of beans upstairs. Just a single can of beans, nothing else. During our perimeter cleanup, we found a wonderful hiking bag to replace our satchel with, giving us just a little bit more of the space that we desperately needed. For dinner tonight, we'd enjoy some canned corn and beans that we found in the nearby shops. Now that we had the tarp and the tent pegs, we just needed sturdy sticks to finish its craft. To make the sticks, we'd need a saw. To make a saw, we'd need the hammer, and some planks from these barricades. It'd take us two hours to realize we'd been carrying the wrong hammer to get this whole thing started. With the proper hammer and some electronics, we'd earnestly begin our craft chain. First, we smash the electronics into a saw blade and make a saw. Then we use the new saw to craft the sturdy sticks. With those, we can complete the tent kit. And from now on, we'd be sleeping luxuriously all across Kentucky. With a nice bed now acquired, we turn our focus to making a makeshift barricade around where we'll be sleeping tonight.
With our makeshift barricade complete, we rest easy as we lay down in our tent and let the eerie dance of snowflakes rock us to sleep. In a worst-case scenario, we now had a place we could fall back to if we needed to rest and recuperate in the comfort of safety. When we awoke the next day, the snowstorm had shifted into a downpour. We decided since we got in so late, we would stay here and do some fishing. We used our axe to make some logs from a nearby tree and carve them down into spears that we can use for fishing. We didn't have a talon for it, but we'd spend all day trying to catch us a delicious meal for tonight. Which we'd succeed in doing. We'd have good food for the day and tomorrow, at the very least. It was the morning of day three. Another flurry of snow descended upon the chilled earth before the rise of the sun. We awoke early to an icy breeze and decided to take off down the road to find a place to shelter and warm up. We decided to leave behind the hunting rifle and the pistol. Although useful tools, they ultimately outweighed any benefits they'd bring. We'd spent so long waiting, grew tired. After the sun had warmed the tundra, we'd lay out for a dangerous afternoon nap. When we awake and refreshed, we pack our stuff and finish looting the neighboring house. Packed away in this golden fridge, a mighty meal of lard, jam-packed full of calories to keep us full for a long time. Not exactly gourmet dining, though. Way down the road, we find a cutoff with an old farmhouse that's calling to us. We've decided to set up camp here for tonight, which means we'll need to clear out the perimeter. As we approach cautiously, Eerie sounds withered out from within the darkness all around. Inside the creepy mess laid even more creepiness. We tried for a bit, but it felt like the whole world was going to cave in on us. We backtracked quickly. Before sending a blade of light piercing through the ephemeral darkness, lighting our way forward. clown car of a room nearly caught us by surprise. We didn't waste any time putting room between us and the vanishing door trick. We spend a few moments recollecting ourselves before returning to the task at hand, clearing out a place to rest peacefully.
After our perimeter has been cleaned up a bit, we do some foraging just to see what we can find. We managed to find some twigs. Another zombie. And a campfire kit that we can claim for our own. Completing the list of specific survival items we were searching for. If only we could find a bottle now. Our first few days headed towards Louisville have been a monumental success. We have portable cooking and comfort, a basic set of tools for maintenance and construction, and a decent arsenal of bladed weaponry to carve a path forward to her sister. We still had a few items to secure, like water and gas containers, but that would have to wait until next time. In this boundless realm of limitless potential, we stand at the precipice of an extraordinary adventure. Before us unfolds the tapestry of reality, where the absence of bottle, can opener, hints at trials yet untold. As for the man behind the mask, the name's Salvador Wix, a master of thievery and connoisseur of chaos. A claustrophobic, short-sighted, smoke-breathed vagabond who's always made his own way in life. Locks and ignitions surrender to our skilled touch, while the great outdoors beckons to our restless soul. Three days have passed since we've arrived in this domain. Our current noteworthy skills are five fitness, five strength, two light-footed, nimble, sneaking, mechanic, foraging, and short blades, with level one in maintenance and lock picking. With the sun already rising higher into the sky, we take off towards the farmer's fields and sheds. What awaits us is anyone's guess. We can only stare and wonder at what kind of monster they've locked away in there. We find some value in the shed. We'll take note of the generator in case we need it in the future. The rope and the tool belt will be coming with us. It was just about 8 in the morning when we pulled into another small gathering of houses. We let the locals know we were there for a visit, but it didn't really seem like they wanted the company. As we unveiled the secrets of the trash can, a divine surprise revealed itself. Michelangelo's special eagerly awaited our famished souls. The house offered paltry rewards, a can of peas, and a chocolate bar. Butter knife, bread knife, jar. I'll take that jar. Can I put water in the jar? I cannot put water in the jar. We're in Kentucky, and I can't use a mason jar as a glass. Come on. The next house in the block had a similar welcoming party waiting, though this one at least brought gifts. A youthful vagabond's reverie realized a captivating crowbar casually sauntered into our lives. This extraordinary house exuded excessive extravagance within its walls. We discovered not only a can of tomatoes, but also a bottle of bleach, a fortuitous find that would serve as a continual liquid vessel once emptied. Thankfully, contamination isn't a thing in Project Zomboid. My god, there's a lot in there. Apparently, this neighborhood was fond of parties. 
as a surprise one startled us as we checked out the garage, forcing us into another confrontation. Close brush with death has us seeing light flash before our eyes as we're knocked over on top of a pile of the thrashing dead. By some miraculous fate, we escaped unharmed, only to be quickly reminded that the fight was not over. I <laughs> literally got nothing out of that. Oh, oh man. Although the walking dead brought no further gifts, we did gain access to the garage now. We at the bare minimum had a reserve of fuel in the barrels we found inside, if we couldn't find any more further down the road, although that was all that remained in this forgotten chest of time. Just south of the garage lingered another horde of creepers, which we decided to clear out as well while we were here. The only interesting item was the ghillie suit, but it was unfortunately too damaged to claim. With that, our interest here decayed, so we pushed on further down the road. We wanted to try to make it to Riverside's border before the end of the week, which we were starting to doubt with the ever-increasing population standing between us and our goals. With the size of this horde getting out of control, we'd attempt to split it up in the bushes to bring it down to a more approachable size. This seemed to work relatively well. With an abundance of new cadavers littered across the roadside, we'll take a well-deserved break to smoke a cigarette and recenter ourselves. When we push off, we notice some piles of trash by the roadside that will stop and forage. 
What we didn't realize when we stopped was that one of Zomboy's greatest gifts was about to walk right into us. In the remains of the fallen, the ultimate weapon of a blade connoisseur like us glistened with resplendent glory, the katana. A legendary masterpiece we'd only dared to dream of possessing now lay within our grasp. The sheer notion that such a coveted gift would be bestowed upon us so effortlessly and unexpectedly was beyond our wildest imaginations. Well, that's a thing. I have a fucking katana now. Although our new blade could easily carve through these masses, we decided to save it for emergencies. Surely entering the city will require more force than we're currently applying. It'll be good reassurance to have such a powerful tool at our disposal when the time is right. Horus, 15 shot, 9 millimeter. I have a holster for it. Pretty light. 15 bullets. We'll take it for now. In the blink of a morning, our arsenal expanded, acquiring an all-purpose crowbar, a devastating katana, and a loaded pistol within the last block. These invaluable tools will become something to rely on in the days to come. After pulling the horde away from our next target using our bike, we pull in and proceed to clear the surroundings. With it being only one house, this should be a relatively quick trip. We lure a piece of the horde we distracted earlier right to our location with an ill-placed shout. As the fracture shattered our last hunting blade, a sense of desperation filled the air. Without it, our ability to access the carefully collected canned provisions was now compromised. We were left with no choice but to seek out a can opener or a viable substitute, a knife that can serve the same purpose. Otherwise, we'd be eating whatever we could find just lying around. Fortunately, the fridge held another precious commodity, a fresh container of lard. With two lards at our disposal, we had a minimum of 8,000 calories to sustain us while we ventured forth in search of the indispensable tools we needed. The house offered no other gifts, and the shed was locked up tight. A couple barricades can't stop us, though. We quickly peeled them off the door in an attempt to open it, only to find it locked from the inside. We try to pick the lock, but break it in our attempt. We try to pry it open with our crowbar, but find ourselves exhausted too quickly. We even attempt to support the zombie in breaking it, but need to take a break to catch our breath. We weren't prepared for the sheer tenacity this door contained. After everything we threw at it, what more could we even do? After some contemplation, we'll attempt to disassemble it, but find our attempt was redirected onto a nearby wall somehow. Shocked and defeated, we surrender to the mighty door and proceed with the path it has set forth for us. We'll empty the crate cautiously and then destroy it finally releasing the beast within. Nestled within the shed, a convenient propane tank awaited, its weight rendering it impractical to carry along our journey. However, its presence promised a valuable contingency plan, a reserve resource to rely upon should the need arise in the days ahead. With the pouring rain blocking out the setting sun, we decided to just settle in here tonight. Opening up the shed took far longer than expected. We read our way through our cooking book before anything else to maximize the gains we might receive. 
It wasn't until 4 a.m. when we finished that task. We'd used the book as fuel to warm us up in this harsh morning breeze. We decided to try the mushrooms we'd foraged along the way, hoping grilling might make them taste better. Our luck runs afoul when the first one hits our stomach. We instantly feel nauseous and begin to worry. We run around in the dark, hoping we might find lemongrass. To no avail. We we'll only find the dead lurking in wait for us. Between our exhaustion and our hunger and our sickness, we can barely hold our own against a single face of pest. We retreat back to the safety of the shed to find us panicking in the response to the walls closing in around us. We try to disassemble them to make this not a room anymore, but we can't fool the system that easily. We sit, an utter mess, completely exhausted and worn down from a series of questionable decisions, hoping only that nothing stumbles upon us in the state. When our stomach settles down, we decide to brave the rest of our mushrooms. Surely the rest weren't poisonous as well. Following an uneasy smoke and a snail-paced reed, a sense of relaxation begins to wash over us, gradually opening the door to the possibility of much-needed rest. But first, we needed to clear the bodies away from our tent before closing the lid on this harrowing night for good. It was in the dark of a stormy night when everything took a turn for the worse. I'm dead. I'm dead as I'm not dead. I scratched. We're okay. They destroyed my tent though. A couple of dead break us from our slumber, ruining our prized tent and sense of security, leaving us with a nasty scratch on our arm. With no accessible food and no shelter, we had no choice but to pick up the broken pieces and push on into the dark, storming abyss to try and find some relief from this nightmare. The long dark was a haunting, harrowing ride, but it wouldn't be too long before we came to another pull-off down the road. Although decayed with time, the front of the house was still locked up tight. When we went around to the back, we found the door smashed to pieces and a hungry ghoul stalking the dark. In the darkness wallowed a few beautiful gifts, a beer and a bottle of soda, a meat cleaver, some powdered milk, and a pot to finally cook food in. This house offered many of the basic survival utilities we needed. Now we wouldn't be anchored to the sinks of civilization anymore, allowing us to travel further with less repercussions and worries.
but still no direct access to the food we carried. We shoved on further into the darkness, a little less troubled by our earlier losses. <laughs> We'll flow down the concrete river until it becomes jammed up again. We'll need to stop to try and clear the road of its obstacles. After a brisk hike through the jolly woods, we grab our things and meander down the road. Nary a worry on our mind. With our problems conveniently pushed somewhere else, we had not but forward to go. The deluging storm still fiercely roared when we pulled into our next collection of scavenging piles, the wind and rain playing games with our senses, leaving us discontent in the open. It wasn't until we heard the real thud of a nearby creeper that we were able to ground ourselves in reality and make any more progress. Though the haunting darkness still hindered our momentum. Inside the old overgrown shed was another generator. To top it off, we found a spare hammer as well. The 22 pistol inside the gun case reminded me of the old duck hunting gun, but it didn't offer any additional boons, so we'd leave it to rot in that old shed. The other garage was locked up tight. We tried the bobby pin first, but break it in the lock. When we pull out the crowbar, the door is a lot more malleable than the first. The area around the lock easily bends to our will and shows us the empty treasure chest we've been trying to break into all along. Now vacant house held the most glorious gift, a can of corned beef, which was one of the few cans we could open by hand. On the brink of starvation, we greedily gorged ourselves on the generous grub. Although it was the only thing to be found, we couldn't be happier with our find. Content is the sound of our stomach as we push deeper into the cul-de-sac. Within the abandoned abode resided absolute emptiness, except for a solitary razor beckoning us to seize it for the purpose of self-maintenance. The thought of discovering our long-lost sister after all these years, only to have her fail to recognize us due to an unkept beard and untamed mane, filled us with dread. With nothing left here, we shoved back off into the abyss. That John Cena? Oh, I can see him.
This particular abode was a bit overpacked for our liking. We'd used the agility and noise from our bike to lure the pack away from our target in order to make our lives a little bit easier. Though in the dark of this horrid morning, it was hard to tell how effective this plan was. After eliminating the immediate dangers, we allowed ourselves a moment to relax and quench our thirst. To our delight, a pleasant surprise awaited us within this dwelling. A box of cereal and some pasta, both high-calorie preserved provisions that could be easily accessed alongside the lard we already possessed. We now had a valuable stockpile of nourishment capable of supporting us during the most arduous of times. As the sun began its ascent, our apprehension towards the unknown gradually dissipated. We eagerly ventured across the street towards our next cluster of houses. This Cleaning out houses was thirsty work. We decided to chug down our orange soda so that we could finally have a proper water bottle for the future. Inside the kitchen of this forsaken place was everything we could have asked for. Six cans of food, and more importantly, a kitchen knife. It was one of only four knives in the game which could be utilized as a proper can opener, granting us access to our now growing food preserves, which currently sat at around 11 cans of food, two jugs of lard, a box of cereal, and a thing of pasta. In the dilapidated runoff garage, we'll establish a makeshift rest spot, utilizing a plastic chair and table sourced from a nearby house. We'll set up our temporary base before venturing into the shed. Inside, a discovery awaited us. Several barrels of aged fuel. We eagerly poured out the contents of our bleach water bottle and repurposed it into a fuel container. We refilled both our bikes and lighters greedily with this valuable liquid gold, while it remained conveniently accessible. Despite a challenging start to the morning, which resulted in the unfortunate loss of our beloved tent, we preserved and made commendable headway. Although we were deprived of our comfortable bed, fortune smiled upon us as we stumbled upon both water and fuel containers. Additionally, 
we successfully regained access to our preserved food provisions, effectively doubling the size of our nourishment stockpile. Propelled by our unwavering momentum, we arrived at the outskirts of the urban area near Riverside in less than a week, though how long the rest of the journey would take was anyone's guess. Seizing the opportunity for momentary peace, we find solace in the calm winds and prepare ourselves for the upcoming expedition. The daunting task of traversing through the towns and cities with their overwhelming populations and uncertain prospects of worthwhile discoveries will remain a constant challenge. However, our journey into Riverside would have to be postponed until next time. Just outside of Riverside, we bunkered down for the day. We had learned a hard lesson previously about not securing a sleeping spot properly. We formed a makeshift barricade around us, using our bike and some furniture from the nearby houses. Hopefully just enough to wake us up if the dead come knocking. We'll utilize our sunlight today to relax and get our tan on, as well as to familiarize ourselves with our new pistol. We'd gain three levels in reloading before we'd call it a wrap. We then gorged ourselves on a few cans of food to stabilize our weight, and enjoyed a finer delicacy of the smoker, the after-dinner cigarette before finally heading to bed. When tomorrow dawned, we'd be taking our first steps into Riverside and facing whatever mess was left over from the fallout. The new day brought new clouds, overcasting the entire sky, forecasting a possible rainstorm brewing in our way. We wouldn't let that stop us from pushing forward though. As we pulled into the neighborhood, we spotted a group of fencing we could use to our advantage, but we secured a foothold on this town. As the roar of our engine ceased, the roar of the sky began. The raindrops poured down as we attempted to wrangle up the neighborhood and evict them from their current homes. That's a lot of neighbors. Feeling confident in our actions, we happily cleaned up the stragglers. There was a somber melody upon the wind that whistled through the falling rain. The sinister concoction of blood and rain washing down us created an amplifying sense of dread in the air that was only multiplied by the sadness we felt with every broken blade. We had no time to mourn the loss of our friends, for the shattered knives served as a chilling reminder of the battles we had yet to face. Not once, but twice, do our knives phase through the ethereal demons, leaving us vulnerable and open for counterattack. Both arms wounded in mere moments. We were lucky they were only scratches. As long as a fever didn't start brewing, we'll know we'll be okay. Not a chance in this barren wasteland will let a virus stop us from reuniting with our only family. <laughs> In this overly secure parking lot, we loot what we can. A paperclip in the dash is a great find. We can also use these cars to level our mechanics skill, which we'll need to get to level 5 if we're going to keep the engine on our bike maintained for the entire trip. For some reason, every portage on was barricaded from the outside. A warning well received. Okay. <laughs> 
With the parking lot secured, we decided to go retrieve our bike and fortify the fenced area. What? Okay, guess I'm fighting a horde to get back to my bike. Hey guys, can you see me? Ah, uh, I did not mean to do that. Just get away from where I yelled and uh, hopefully everything will be fine. Although we got away okay with an ill-placed scream, we still had to compete against the many hordes still lingering in the area if we wanted to safely loot the houses. In the future, we may want to consider stealthier approaches as to avoid fighting hundreds of zombies a day. As our stab counter rises sharply, we're impaled with a nice supply of experience pushing our efficiency with short blades to a new level. After acquiring our bike and bag, we proceed to transfer them to the protected parking area. Our intention was to extend our stay here by a day or two, dedicating our time to gain more expertise in mechanics. Having a secure entrance for defense would greatly enhance our peace of mind during sleep. He's got a present for us. It's very kind. Very nice. No ammo. 3.4 pounds, too. A shotgun is definitely an essential item, though. During our perimeter check, we forage over the trash piles we see just in case there's some hidden treasure. Just a doll and an empty beer can for now. It's almost like hitting the jackpot when we open the drawer and find an unopened pack of smokes with our name on it. We'll also grab some of this furniture to blockade the entrance to the parking lot. This would become our temporary castle while we trained and looted the nearby conveniences. Once we established the entrance blockade, we proceeded to remove the corpses from the vicinity of our sleeping area. Although it might be prudent to dispose of them beyond the fence, it would require significant additional effort. Instead, we opt to stack them into convenient piles, ensuring that if they reanimate, we can easily dispatch them again. With our temporary castle notated, we devour a couple cans of food to ease our hunger, while we peruse the contents of our inventory. It wouldn't last forever, but for the time being, we could be content in our supplies. Tonight, we have made the choice to utilize one of the dilapidated vehicles as our sleeping quarters. We believe this aligns with the permissible usage defined by the challenge we have undertaken. Feel free to share your thoughts on this matter in the comment section below. Please consider clicking the subscribe button if you haven't already. It helps a ton. Thanks. We awaken long before the darkness recedes before the dawn. We'll waste away these perilous hours of shadow with some light reload training. When it's finally bright enough to see what you're stabbing, we'll attempt to finish looting the neighborhood to try and stockpile a bit more food for our oncoming training sessions.
Inside the first house was two cans of sustenance and a bottle of bravery pills. These beta blockers will help us maximize our damage output when we're fighting hordes, since it'll block us from panicking as much. <laughs> The second house was completely barren of anything usable. We were maintaining an impressive rate of blade destruction, unfortunately obliterating our tenth one within a single week. Upon reaching the third house, we discovered a delightful assortment of food items inside the trash can. Among them were mushrooms, a cockroach, and even a fresh can of corn. Oh, where did that word come from? Those beta blockers we found earlier were definitely coming in handy now. In the midst of relentless pursuit, we take a brief moment to control our anxiety. With the adrenaline coursing through our veins, we calmly consumed a cigarette, inhaling some peace before plunging back into the chaotic fray. Finally, with the neighborhood cleared of the ominous ball of death, we could take some time and catch our breath while looting the piñata's treasures. No. No. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. In the span of just seven days, we eliminated 463 of these beasts. However, the intense exertion required to clear these areas were rapidly depleting our calorie reserves. It may be wise to redirect our efforts towards relocating the hordes, rather than engaging in direct combat to maximize our supply of food. I think I found Curious George. Box of nails, oh my god, yes. We weren't even in the city fully yet, and already it felt like an endless supply of confrontations awaited us.
This is a mistake. Let me sit back and see who gathers. Completely exhausted from an entire day of non-stop action, we take a locally supplied chair and attempt to catch our breath under the beautiful sky. Before refilling our bottle in the house we just freed, it offered no other pleasantries for us. Nor did the next vacated lot either. After a long way, we finally had the opportunity to scavenge the house that tantalized us with its discarded food. Much to our delight, it turned out to be a treasure trove of provisions. The kitchen cabinets revealed not just one, but two additional cans of food, as well as a mechanics magazine. With darkness once again drawing closer, and seeing the numbers these hordes can travel in, we take the final moments of day to reinforce our barricade with a second layer, and clear away the vines which would impair our visions around our defenses. A final bit of foraging rewards us with a bundle of extra mushrooms as well. At the end of the day, we found a wonderful area to utilize to better our chances going forward. With a decent food supply, we happily enjoy a high calorie dinner as well as read our new magazine. In order to ensure a peaceful night's rest, we meticulously cleared the surroundings of the encroaching undead. After enduring two challenging days of continuous combat, an unwavering commitment to improve our mechanics has motivated us to press on. By securing this temporary outpost within a fortified parking lot, we can now devote our full attention to the essential training that lies ahead. But that, we'll have to wait until next time. Somewhere outside of Riverside, we found ourselves elbows deep in the old vehicles of that abandoned parking lot we'd holed up in. We spent the entire day gaining valuable EXP by uninstalling and reinstalling everything we could, hoping to fail as many times as possible to maximize our gains per car. We'll start each day we're in this fort with a perimeter check. We'll also forage the many trash piles around the edge, hoping to uncover anything useful. Today, our prize was a box of crayons and an eraser. After breakfast, we'll get back to our mechanics training. Fill this up. Let's see, it looks like we're gonna get about 20 EXP per car. So we need 15 cars at the moment, unless we can find a jack and a lug wrench. We'll get a lot more attempts on a muffler. Uh, we don't have basic mechanics. That's gonna be a problem. That means we can't do cars stuff. Yeah. That's a problem. So I need to find heavy duty vehicles. It's really gonna screw me. I need to find that book. Nice. Tenth of level three. Yep. There we go. Time to train. A thick wrench was thrown into our plan to power level mechanics. Not only did we not have all the tools we needed, we also had no idea what we were doing inside the hood of most cars. Plan A would have to be scrapped. And sprinting level one. Here a little time before nighttime. Let's uh 
around and find out. We decided if we couldn't improve our minds, we'd focus on our bodies. We had plenty of calories stored up, so now was the perfect opportunity to strengthen ourselves in as many ways as we could. The outside hordes would act as multipliers for our EXP gains throughout our training. What is... Oh. There's a car there. Sprinting, sneaking, light-footed, and nimble were the skills of focus. We'd also grab a little bit of carpentry EXP in between to break up the monotony of our training. We were hoping to get at least level 2 in carpentry so we could build fences in an emergency situations. You, Mr. Big Tree. Okay. Is it ideal? No. Is it working? Yes. This is a disposable weapon that I didn't want anyways. We used the cleaver we found to chop down a bunch of trees that we turned into random objects for EXP. We're not sure if this counts as an axe or a knife, but we didn't have any plans to bring it along any further, so we wanted to turn it into something useful. Oh no, what tool did I just break? The tool did I break? My knife? I can no longer open my cans again. I didn't realize I was using my kitchen knife. A mistake in our crafting destroys our most valuable can opening knife, leaving us anxious and worried deep into the night. When morning breaks, we're greeted by the soft tapping of rain atop the roof of our sleeping box. We sluggishly consume our morning's first nicotine as we step out into the world, hoping to leave yesterday's mistakes in the past. Don't mind if I, I dibble a do. Just found myself a cigarette, my dude. Newspaper? Take a newspaper. Oh, I have another kitchen knife, so that's okay. You are good there. Let's just eat the pasta. Get those calories back up. Go. That flattens our weight. Let's see where we're at here. Good. Good. With a reassuring chain of positive experiences, we venture back into the neighborhood adjacent to the parking lot. Our goal was to complete the remaining carpentry level and finish searching the houses we couldn't explore before. Mm, we got friends. We got a few friends. Generator. Did I get them? I didn't get them. Come on, guys. I want those sardines, so you gotta come with me. We ball up the chasing dead and leave them chasing after their own growls in the woods, while we heist the precious salted sardines and continue on down the street. Take a seat, boy. Ooh, cigarettes. Thank you. Within the desiccated interior of this old house, we stumbled upon two delightful discoveries, a valuable book on carpentry, and a versatile frying pan. Our vagabond skill continues to be more than OP when we find more fresh, already open cans of food awaiting us in the trash can. Right around the corner, awaited another surprise.
Having come home to find the front of our fort infested, we shout away freely to gather up the intruders and bring them to the backyard so they wouldn't destroy our barricade. With the sizable gathering collected, now would be a great time to get some training in. safe to sleep here. It'd be a good couple hours till the night quieted down enough to sleep. In the morning, we'd refill our calorie count by consuming an entire thing of lard and then begin our skill grind anew. Wouldn't be until the late hours of the night when we finally achieve some progress across the board, leveling up sneaking, sprinting, and light-footed. We turn our focus to our nimble training until a new day's dawn came, and then we'd venture out to the nearby plaza to refill our food reserves. Physical training always consumed an absolute boatload of calories. The first building was an overgrown bar with loaded tables. Before diving inside, we'd secure a few exits and check the perimeter. The bar turned out to be an absolute treasure trove. The trash cans were filled with food. The tables and counters were filled with beer and wine and more beer. But most important, out of all of the finds, was a bottle of bourbon, something we could use to get the ultimate hoard clearing tool, a Maltov. With our stomachs filled with food and our bags filled with beer, we pushed out the front window and made our way toward our next objective. Right from the moment we walked in, we knew this was going to be amazing. Our objective was his grocery store, which greeted us with an entire bag of beans. The semi-stock shells provided us with even more goodies to sustain our current lifestyle. It was about 6.30 when we finished up with the grocery store. We took our lunch break right there in the parking lot. Our piece was short-lived though, as distant creepers started to get closer.
The building provided nothing. Only our Vagabond skill provided anything. Further proving it's way too good in this type of a challenge. Feeling good about our training so far, we decided to practice a new killing move. We moonwalk away from the creepy breather, waiting for the opportunity. And then we strike. The timing would take some practice. There we go. With a solid grasp of the move, we headed back home with a few companions and threw ourselves a little nimble training celebration. The sun would set before we finally reached nimble level four. We would say our revoir to our dancing friends and call it a night. As the morning's melody swept throughout the land, we kindled the fire and prepared a delectable meal to lift our spirits. It was peculiar that we felt utterly dejected after a night of dancing with the rattling dead. Who could possibly feel distraught after such an extraordinary night? Throughout our week of relentless training, we allowed our beard to grow untamed beneath our scarf. We decided to remedy the situation by shaving it away with one of our blades, leaving our beautiful smile to shine through once again. Before continuing our dedicated training, we allocate some time to craft a Maltev cocktail for emergency situations. The hours flew by quickly, day in, day out. We engorged on generous meals to keep our weight from rapidly falling, and indulged in all the nicotine and beer we could want while we concentrated on improving our certain skills. The morning routine stayed the same. Wake up, smoke, perimeter check, and foraging, followed by more sneaky running. Clearing the perimeter, we practiced our new kill move every chance we could afford to. In fact, we got distracted and ended up wandering the neighborhood, looking for more undead to dance with. We realized while we were out, we actually forgot a couple houses and decided to clear them while we were having fun. Along with a 38 special, this man had a single holster he wanted us to have. We decided to stop wasting opportunities with ammo, since we needed the aiming EXP. We fired off the few rounds it came with, before it was time to disappear.
we got back to our makeshift fort, the front was infested with pests again. We'd rile them up and drag them down screaming to the backyard where they couldn't cause any problems for us. With our adventure done for the day, we retreated over our fence and settled in to finish our training. Leveling up sprinting, sneaking, and light-footed again, we were extremely happy with the progress that we'd made here. We refilled our bottles and settled in by the fire, reclining against the tire of the old beat-up car. We prepared a victory and farewell meal of beans, beers, and peas to commemorate our time here and to restabilize our weight. It was now our 16th day, having crossed the borders into this hell zone, but we'd be lying if we said we weren't enjoying ourselves. Tonight, we would fill our stomachs to bursting, and prepare for tomorrow's new adventure. But that will have to wait until next time. In the heart of the night, our toughest choices emerge. An ambiguous battle between our need to move forward and our desire to bring with us the beautiful shotgun we found. With leather strips and a belt, we could make a sling to bear its weight. But we discarded our belt in a place it went to be forgotten. By that, we mean we forgot where we left it. We ripped a few leather items into strips before finally calling it a night. As dawn breaks, our routine resumes with foraging and cleansing the front yard of the dead. We'll start by searching the fallen of the neighborhood, hoping to find a random belt on one of the dead. <laughs> We felt like there was an endless supply of the dead pouring into this area every night. But not a single person was wearing a belt in this timeline. Sure. Nobody delivered, and our quest for a sling continued. Honestly, what am I even doing? It's 1040. I'm wasting time. We decided to head on foot into town and start clearing our way to a possible sling. If anywhere was going to have one, the police station was going to be the place. But first, we had to make it there in one piece. We'll utilize our tried and true method of rounding up the crowd and displacing them somewhere else, taking on any splinter groups that split off from the main pack. chamber in a box of 45, which I will absolutely take right now. Let's have some fun. Drag all those zombies I just left behind right back to me, you know? Pretty good. Oh, so bad at anything. I need a shotgun. Every bullet was a beautiful bounty of EXP, and each gun we found was a new magazine or attachment we could keep for future purposes. In all circumstances, we're always looking to repurpose anything we loot from the destitution of this world. All right, last shot. Here we go. Whiff. Guess we can finish y'all off. Let's go. Good. Nice. Eat all of that. Another water bottle. 
Moving on. Pretty. Pretty good. Why does nobody have belts on? I just need a belt. Why did I throw away my belt when I need my belt? I didn't know I could make a sling out of a belt. Wait, I want to be over there, don't I? Where am I? Yeah, I want to go back up that way. I am in the wrong place. Move, move, move. Oh, move less, move less. Hi. How you doing? Thanks. Have a nice day. Woo. That was close. That was close. I don't know what she managed to bite into, but it wasn't me. What kind of spear is that, sir? Ooh, reclaim that hunting knife. A lot quieter here now. Let's go check the burger place. They don't look good, but we're gonna eat them. Okay, that's only a little terrifying. Take the ketchup. Corn beef. Yeah, we'll take some sugar. Gravy mix. How heavy is that? It's light. Yeast. Oh, the ice cream rotten. It's a lot of calories. I think we take it anyways. <sighs> myself it's it it is a lot of calories still but i don't want to die to be getting sick the burger joint held quite a bounty of food for us while inside the bait shop we managed to find some tackle and line but what awaited us outside was even more exciting pickaxe i want mr bag there yeah there we go a nice kiting kill delivers a replacement side bag for our journeys. Every inch of space was crucial. Clock. The red dot sight. Even though we could carry our shotgun now, we still wanted to finish what we started. The police station held a captivating lure about it, the possibility of plentiful plunders. We continued to take aim with every loaded gun that came our way, hoping to improve our aiming skill and hasten our adventure. See you later. Some of these. We rely heavily on our beta blockers to maintain our sanity. Anything to stop our body from freezing in terror amongst the ravaging hordes. Bathed in the afternoon's gentle glow, a wave of fatigue began to set in. We brought ourselves to a halt, allowing a moment to catch our breath. The day had been a relentless deluge of the dead since the moment we left the confines of our fort, but we were determined to press on as far as possible tonight. That was stupid of me. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Oh, where did you guys come from? Okay.
regret when the living's easy. Okay. Okay. Get on the ground. See you later. Do 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 Okay. Guess we're using them. Just as we decided we were about to head home, a loot bag decided to hand us a box of a hundred bullets and one of the worst guns you can possibly find. Panicking. Panicking. Take the pills. Take the pills. Smoke a cigarette. Gotta calm down. We're missing everything. Hit a shot. Bruh, really? <laughs> oh, that was sad. Alright, out of here. way too tired now. It was about 12.30 in the morning when we finally got home to sleep. What was supposed to be a day of departure turned into a day of departing the dead. A heavy fog lingered when we awoke. We skipped morning routine and instead reorganized our belongings, refill our water reserves, and ate a hearty breakfast before heading out into the dreary mist to continue our adventure. You no, know, use up the katana. Typically, we had a habit of hoarding anything valuable without actually utilizing it. This shift in approach felt remarkably liberating, yet we still hesitated to travel with our bike. The risk of damaging it with our limited access to mechanical knowledge haunted us every time we looked at her beautiful sheen. Also, the thought of having to push her all the way to Louisville felt ridiculous, so we lay her on the side of caution for now. And on this particular treasure goblin, a hidden arsenal laid out in front of us. Well... You're gonna give me the ammo. I'm gonna use the ammo. The world seemed to be pressuring us to get good at aiming already. Got one shot left. With the last of our bullets spent, we'll take the time to clean up the mess that we've made. tension shattered as her intended stab missed its mark, and suddenly we were ensnared by the grasping hands of the undead, dragged into the very heart of their malevolent gathering. Our struggle for escape was frantic, our pulse pounding against the suffocating walls of decaying flesh. Through sheer will or luck, we broke free, fleeing the scene and painting the ground with a trail of our own blood. Their bony fingers gazed our neck and shoulder, imprinting stinging reminders of their touch, while cruel lacerations marred both our lower arms. Fueled by adrenaline, we raced home, the panic of the moment propelling us forward, the world a blur around us. Behind our fortress walls, we gasped for air, the throbbing pain of our wounds reminding us of our vulnerability. Once we've regained our composure, we turn our attention to the fallen. The one and only mask we adored was torn asunder during the struggle. Unrepairable from the damage. Rest in peace, mask. With a steady hand and a racing mind, we tended to our battered body. Seeking solace and healing in the midst of chaos, we'd boil a pot of water to sterilize some rags and replace our current bandages hoping to help prevent normal types of infection. As for the virus, we could only wait and wonder and worry at what is just a possibility now, growing into probability. We focus on what we can do, clean bandages, fresh food, and lots of nicotine, a recipe that's gotten us through all of our troubles in the past.
An ill feeling poured through our gut as the pot of beans boiled away. A taste of what is to come, or a memory of Taco Tuesdays gone by. We paced relentlessly, reassuring ourselves over and over again, repeatedly echoing excuses to ourselves. It's just food poisoning, a minor cold, or perhaps the lingering scent of the blood saturating our clothes. The crackling of tobacco soon flooded our ears as we puffed down our worries one drag at a time. Time itself seemed to slow down as the smoke of two fires danced over the blood-stained grass at our feet. When dinner finally finished, we devoured it directly from the pot and treated ourselves to another smoke. We decided we'd just sleep off the squeezy feeling, and in the morning, when we were feeling better, we could finish what we started at the police station. We were in far too much pain to get any shut-eye right now. To ease our burden and release some tension, we decided to drink an entire bottle of wine and lay down with a good book. Surely, when the pages would close again, so would our eyelids. In the night, our queasy stomach boiled into a full-blown fever. We awoke an anxiety-ridden puddle, covered in the sweat of our late-night fever. But the scare of zombie infection had passed. We blinked awkwardly at the setting sun, wondering just how long we had actually slept for. Had it been 12 hours, or 24? An answer we could easily figure out if we looked at our watch. We sit by the charcoals of our campfire and reflect on our journey to find our sister. 18 days, 850 dead zombies, and we hadn't even made it through the first city yet. Perhaps we were taken each day for granted. We'd spend the entirety of that night sitting under the stars, chain-smoking cigarettes and reflecting on our near-death experience. It wasn't the first time we'd battle for our lives, and it definitely won't be the last. When the sun peaked across the horizon again, we'd settle on our decision to finish what we started, no matter what. The trespassers on our front lawn brought us a beautiful get well soon present, a bright pink six shooter wrapped up with a big crossbow. It was really hard to feel melancholic when you have a bright pink gun in your hands. And not long after, we found an additional box of ammo for our new toy. During our morning vengeance spree, we managed to level up both our aiming and long blades to level one. We also completely wore out our katana and shattered it on the skull of our victim. We've given it the honorary spot of our 20th knife broken.
Rest in peace, Katana. finally got back to the police station, we found it still had plenty of resistance waiting for us. The number of dead that wandered these streets seemed as endless as the stars. But we pushed on, with blade and gun in hand against the ravagers scavenging this land for a living meal. We relied again on our pills to keep us moving, unbothered by the swarms of rotting flesh chasing after us. We happily closed the final chapter on the story of their lives, and absorbed the value they managed to maintain past death. Whatever awaited them after this would have to be handled without their mortal possessions. We find a loaded Winchester 12 gauge, and although we should probably save those shells, we can't fight the temptation. Surprisingly unsatisfying. Apparently, there were a lot of celebrities in Riverside when the catastrophe happened. Inside the police station was two packs of paper clips, a pack of smokes, and two boxes of 357 ammo, which we couldn't use yet. Although very valuable, it wasn't at all what we were expecting to find, and we couldn't help but feel the disappointment fall upon our shoulders. At least Miss Kidman provided us with a nice utility belt for our inconvenience. Since the police station barely touched our weight capacity, we decided to finish looting the area. The spiffos next to the gas station would surely provide. Inside each trash can was a can of sardines, and on almost every table, a bottle of ketchup was waiting to be rescued. Although we never found a belt or a sling, we had at least reduced our load having used up so many weapons, we could easily bring the shotgun with us on our trip to the next town. Before the sun had a chance to crest the horizon, we arose from slumber. We affixed a light to our shotgun and then attached it securely to our bag. Then the time had come for the unruly mane of our beard to yield to the blade, a symbolic farewell to the haven that had sheltered us. We dismantled the entrance barricade, allowing us to retrieve our bike and belongings so we could ride out towards the awaiting hell-brazen horizon. We drained the dwindling depths of our water reserve deliberately to replenish our bottles, preparing with precision for the imminent road trip ahead. We cavaliered into the darkness with our steadfast will to guide us. But where we'd end up, we'll have to wait until next time. The symphony of our motorcycle's engines reverberates through the landscape as we gracefully twist the throttle, propelling ourselves deeper into the heart of Riverside. Beneath our wheels, the remnants of a bygone era lay silent, like ghosts of a memory's past. Yet in this moment, we are not bound by past, but rather propelled by an undeniable sense of purpose. Our journey has just begun, marking the start of an audacious expedition to the next town, filled with both promise and peril. With each passing moment, the undead infested streets of Riverside drew ominously closer, the wind caressing our hair as the decaying urban labyrinth slowly emerges on the horizon, inching its way into our peripheral vision and mirroring itself in our rearview mirrors. The dust billows from our tires, an ephemeral curtain that blinds those unfortunate enough to dare to obstruct our path. An intermittent sense of claustrophobia gripped us as we forged a path through the sea of undead. A shiver rolling across our arms as the wind from their fingers passed over the tears in our sleeve. With each breath, we steeled ourselves, confronting the walls of decaying flesh that encroached upon us. We counted the precious seconds, yearning for the moment when we could finally break free from their relentless presence. As we got further away from the center of cities, the intense hordes began to thin. 
making it much easier to enjoy our countryside ride. A few hours would pass as we trekked down the concrete river when we came to a little pull-off down the road. We decided to stop since it looked like it was close to the river and we really wanted to wash ourselves of the mess we carried. As we maneuvered our bike, we accidentally sent it flying backward into the fence, catapulting us off of it. It seemed like we were both fine, now we just needed to clear the area of threats. Having cleared the area, we maneuvered our bike closer to the warehouse. Our plan was to venture into the forest and reach the river's edge for a much needed wash. However, as we parked the bike, an inadvertent honk of the horn echoed through the surroundings, carelessly alerting anyone within a considerable radius. It would have been wise to make a quick escape, but instead, we chose to remain and confront the encroaching mob. It doesn't take long for things to get out of control, and we're forced to try and lose some of them in the nearby tree lines. With no signs of any more stalkers, we push through into the darkness of the woods to face whatever menace awaits us on the other side. It took a few hours, but we finally managed to clear our way to the river. Here, in the comfort of the cricket's choir, we washed the gore from our skin and clothes. It would feel good to no longer bear the weight of filth with us in our adventure. And we look good, too. As we were about to disembark, a man brings us a beautiful present, a double holster, to replace our current single one. There is also absolutely nothing of value in either of these buildings. So with a fresh wash and a new holster, we'll set forth down our path once again. The journey stretched on endlessly, the road unfolding like an unending ribbon of asphalt beneath our wheels. Time seemed to slow down to a crawl, leaving us with nothing but the monotony of open road. To break the tedium, we reached for our cigarettes, the embers glowing like tiny stars in the dimming twilight. 
each puff a fleeting escape from the relentless march of minutes and miles. At the first undefended crash scene we came across, we stopped for a quick break. It was about 5 p.m. now, we'd been on the road all day long. In the second car, we found a supplementary flashlight, which we'd happily take with us. About an hour later, we came to another crash site. The cars provided nothing, but now we were just outside our destination. We were going to take over this small cul-de-sac, but we couldn't do that being exhausted from a long drive here. We downed an entire bottle of vitamins to empower us to fight whatever threat awaited us at our new campsite. We dismounted quickly and loudly, yelling as we got off the bike, hoping to wake up everyone in this house. We didn't want any of them catching us by surprise. We'd lure them to the back with some noise, and then sneak in the front quickly to open an easier path to clearing out this house. While we instigated the second house on the block, we discovered a beautiful secret. Behind the house, they had a path leading to a dock on the river. This would be a perfect spot to call home camp for now. While we cleared out house two, we found one of the best tools that we've been eagerly searching for, a can opener. Now all of our preserved food menu was available to us. Having cleared both houses, we collected some furniture to create a comfortable camp for ourselves, ensuring we had a secure haven to rest as the sun dipped below the horizon. We settled into our borrowed lazy man at the water's edge, basking in the tranquil symphony of the night's waves lapping against the shore, savoring a modest dinner that required the immediate assistance of our trusty can opener. We then treated ourselves to an after-dinner cigarette. As the smoke unfurled and spiraled into the night, we pondered the toll of the day's struggles. Our journey had led us to confront and dispatch more than a thousand zombies to reach this point. We closed our eyes, ready to welcome the promise of a new day. As the sun painted the river's surface with its morning glow, we stirred from our slumber and departed from our dockside camp. Tonight, our culinary aspirations centered on a delightful fish dinner, motivating us to liberate a grill from the front yard of the initial house. With the grill now in our possession, we turned our sights towards the final unexplored property in the cul-de-sac. We took it slow as not to get surprised, taking out our opposition meticulously. In the kitchen of this old place, we find the remains of an end of the world party. They even saved me a beer. We also found a pickle and some canned evaporated milk. 
Upstairs, in one of the dressers, we find a hand crossbow and some bolts, as well as a nice jacket that we might wear if it gets cold. With the extra holster slot, it was much more viable to use the hand crossbow, so we held on to it for the time being. We'd also collect some scrap wood from the busted down doors for our grill, and take a closer look at our new toy. Behind the last house, we noticed an old building on the map. We do some foraging on our way out there, and find what we would use for fishing later. When we got deep into the woods, we found an old hunting cabin. Inside, we found an antique oven, which normally would be an amazing find. We also found a trapper book, which may or may not come in handy, as well as some fishing line. When we finally get home, we craft up a couple of spears for our fishing session, and then enjoy a nice old beer to set the mood for the evening. Our efforts yielded an abundance of fish, erasing any immediate concerns about food. Slicing them into fillets became our method of choice, extending their freshness as much as possible. The process also offered valuable cooking experience all along the way. Following our satisfying meal of fish fillet, we closed our eyes, content with the day well spent. We awaken with a sense of renewal. As if we had undergone a remarkable transformation, our hair had grown untamed and had abandoned its once familiar style. We couldn't help but chuckle at our comical appearance. Clearly, this wouldn't do. We reached for our trusty blade and skillfully sculpted our hair back into the style we preferred. Yeah, that's much better. Today's objective was to refill on gas. We used up our reserves and were down to a quarter tank in the bike, which means we'd need to be extra careful if we drive into the city. We opted to drive back out into the country and search a nearby farmhouse and neighboring buildings that we saw on the way into camp. In the old farm shed, surrounded by the dead, we find a barrel with a small amount of fuel remaining, just enough to refill our tanks and our reserve. The next shed and car wreck were completely empty. On the bathroom counter, we find more drugs. The more the better, we suppose. The second house held only disappointment and a can of tomatoes. It was a little past noon when we got back to our bike. We'd pause to catch our breath and take an after smoke break. Before heading to the last house on the lot. We find another apocalypse party, with another beautiful beer just for us, but that was all we would find here. We took the main road home to investigate how populated this part of the city would be. The results didn't really come as a surprise.
Returning to our home camp, a surge of excitement coursed through us as we anticipated yet another meal, courtesy of our trusty can opener. We hungrily devoured our divisions by the tranquil blue river, our minds drifting towards the uncertain future. After relishing every last bite, we decided it was time to assess our physical condition. With a mix of curiosity and trepidation, we carefully unwrapped the bandages that had shielded our wounds. It was imperative to determine if our injuries had fully healed or if they still required more time to mend. The choice before us loomed large, whether to confront the hordes lurking within the city, to scavenge for supplies, or embark on a daring journey toward Louisville. One thing remained crystal clear. Our forthcoming trials eclipsed everything we had encountered thus far. We pondered our options while puffing on a cigarette, knowing that our decision would have to wait until next time. We returned to an old dock north of West Point, where we pierced the river's veil for fresh fish. Tonight would be our last evening on this side of town, and when the sun loomed across the water's expanse, we would set out on a journey for the other side of town. There's a large automotive shop isolated on the southern border, where we hope to pick up some repair materials for our bike. We could only hope that it hasn't been fully looted already. We feasted there in our mini paradise rest stop, and helped ourselves to the best fillets among the pile. We'd leave the leftovers inside the grill for any who may come after us. Then we'd utilize the old taps inside the house to refill our water reserves, before finally setting off on our adventure. The trail we tread would lead us directly through the heart of West Point. This main road was guaranteed to be dangerous, but it was the fastest way to where we wanted to be. In preparation for when the world becomes extra crowded, we'll take a moment to limber up with a quick skirmish on the more barren outskirts of town to make sure we were completely ready for whatever the new day wanted to throw at us. We didn't know what awaited us, but one mistake while in town would cost us everything. Our heart raced faster as the sound of our engine drowned out the groans of the ever-increasing walls of death. We'd carefully weave our bike like a needle through the sea of misfits, while the city of West Point began to push over the horizon. The remnants of the deceased carried on mindlessly, until the roar of our thunder awakened their hunger abruptly. We could only grip our handles and grit our teeth as we snaked our way through this overpopulated concrete river. Our feeling of claustrophobia began to constrict us as we pushed through these narrow streets, forced to make split-second decisions about where to turn next. Every feeling of relief was met with an overabundance of panic as we met each obstacle in rapid succession. How long would it be till we made the wrong choice? We barreled out the backside of the horde ball, completely unharmed. It'd be a bit more till we remembered to breathe. We were unsure of the condition of our poor bike after so many collisions. It wasn't long after that that we'd find ourselves crossing the old train tracks, a sign that we had made it through the worst of it. Here at the end of the road we thought it'd be easy pickings, but found it swarming just as badly as the city. We pulled in and hopped off our bike as our spectators rushed in to greet us. With so many adoring fans in every direction, we had no choice but to yell at the top of our lungs. Like the Pied Pipers, we sang our song loudly and pulled the unruly crowd together. Behind us, the enveloping sound of their stampede applauded our efforts to ditch them all with the woods. When we returned to the shop, we found it still overwhelmed by the rest of the horde, their numbers seemingly as endless as the stars in our night sky. We needed to hurry up and figure out what we were going to do. We needed to both create a safe place to stay that night and clear our way into our objective. We would repeat our ditch in the woods plan three times before finally pulling out the gun to make as much noise as possible. 
Bang. 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 We led them all the way down the road till we came to another railroad crossing. There we would ditch the whole group and make our way back. We beelined it through the parking lots, but found our path to be overcrowded. Without much time to think, we threw ourselves over the fence and tucked ourselves into the darkness of the woods and didn't look back. Into the heart of darkness, we rushed ahead, the howling winds carrying the guttural growls from all around us. We raced through the thick depths of the forest, leaving behind a trail of broken branches and twisted twigs. Around every tree's shadow lurked a dense feeling of dread that had our heart pounding faster than ever. We raced along the fence line, the adrenaline of our situation controlling the actions we were taking. And when there was no more clearing to run down, we penetrated back into the thicket of the forest. Our only concern as we pushed by tree and fiend was finding our way out of this dark green hell. Time itself seemed to have slowed down. The endless expanse of purgatory shifted out beyond our horizons. Past every wall of shadow lay another layer of hell disguised as a life-bringing tree. Be it claw or limb, we slowly lost our ability to distinguish what was reaching out for us. And then, faster than it all began, the cursed woods burst open to a familiar road. The hanging sun blasted away the shadows that constricted our hearts, but the endless presence of the hordes made it seem all of our efforts were for naught. Parched from our journey through the woods, we stop at our bag to grab our water bottle and rehydrate. It was there we saw a glimmer of hope. For a brief few moments, we were almost alone. We popped the pills to control our mind and battle the panic trying to set in, all while shepherding the hordes into more convenient places. We'd kill off stragglers every chance we got, hoping to make even the slightest difference in their population. When we'd finally pulled enough away, we'd make a break for it and do a quick check of the automotive shop. The shelves still contained a decent supply of merchandise books and baubles we may need for our adventure. So we pressed on, exhausted from a day of riding, running, and roughing it on the city side, but we needed to find a place to catch our breath. We were finally reaching our limits and made a hasty decision to seek shelter. We climbed atop the old train car used as a welcome sign and sat ourselves there, happy to finally have a place to rest without worry. We'd unfortunately led a pretty sizable horde right to our location, trapping us up here for the foreseeable future. We could only sit and wait while we tried to think of a way out of this mess. We tried pulling them inside the train car with our voice, but it only bundled them all together. The only solution was to sit quietly and wait patiently for the undead to lose interest and an opening to show itself to us. When the moment finally came, we seized it. We threw ourselves off the roof and landed ourselves next to some unseen friends who were more surprised than us at our sudden rebound to the earth. Our legs ached from the sudden stop, but we were okay now. It seems that a large portion of the horde had cleared out, giving us a chance to take out the remaining group of stalkers. Like a chorus from the heavens, the cricket's choir played fearlessly in our triumph. We weren't cleared of threat yet, but the sounds of silence played on repeat in our minds, an echo of the progress we've made so far. It was truly a beautiful sight to behold. Inside our objective, we found our prize spare engine parts that could be used to repair the damage done to our bike. We didn't want to overload ourselves, so we left them there for now, shining upon the dirty tiled floor like a beacon of hope while we attempted to clear out the rest of the shop. 
We'd stop our pursuit of progress only for sustenance, and when our stomachs were full, we'd return to our war for the automotive shop. Our battle waged on deep into the night. The shattering of steel met the cracking of skulls. A violent symphony upon the moonlight orchestra. The darkness pooled in around us as we fought desperately to free this place of its violent intruders. Every swing of our blade a double-edged knife, slowly draining us of our energy and sanity. We sustained ourselves by chugging down a cacophony of pills, but it wasn't enough to change our destiny. It was there, in a duel with death, we made a huge mistake. Our strength left us as we attempted to throw our enemy to the ground, and he landed a huge counter-strike to our head. A deep laceration across the side of our skull was our reward for getting careless. The inky blackness of the night seemed impenetrable as we ventured deeper into our battle for dominance. The shadows concealing the infested inhabitants all around us, our determination burning ever fiercer as we pressed onward through the onslaught. finally able to push back into the shop. Only a few visible beasts left. We could finally rest, we thought, as we got careless again. The sound of shattering glass echoed out into the dark abyss, and when we flashed our lights out at the horizon, dozens of eyes flashed back. We took off out the back of the shop, too exhausted to take on that big of a horde. We needed time to rest and think. We were running out of pills to keep us going. Our exasperation was slowly catching up to us, and the darkness only grew closer and thicker all around us. We did everything we could to keep pushing, but in the end our fatigue overwhelmed us. We needed to get back to the only safe spot we knew of, and we needed our supplies as well. Our first step was to grab our heavy bag of supplies without ourselves getting grabbed first. Then we'd need to find a way to carry everything up a ladder and onto the old train car welcome sign. We managed to escape back to the safety of our elevated platform, but we had one big lingering elephant in the room to address. A humongous horde of zombies followed us and were now swarming all around. Meanwhile, we were fighting to stay awake. We had only one major desire, and that was to rest so we could finish what we started. But soon, night turned into day, and still we could not sleep. We babied soda all day long, drinking a quarter at a time to manage our thirst, but we still, we could not sleep. 
Day would turn into night again. Desperation was setting in. Visions of our nightmares danced at an arm's length as we begged for relief under a new night sky. The siege of howls and groans teetered at the edge of our peripherals, taunting and toying with our sense of space and time. We finally decided to try something different. We got up and moved. Two tiles. But it was there we found comfort. As we let gravity take our body, our minds too found solace in our new location. There atop the West Point sign, we passed out, finally able to find relief from our endless wake. What happens when we open our eyes once more, refreshed and rejuvenated? Would we'll have to wait until next time. When the sun's morning rays shattered our slumber, we saw a window of opportunity present itself. The zombie horde that had trapped us on the roof had wandered away during our extended stay, not wanting to let this opportunity slip away from us. We threw ourselves off the rooftop without a second thought, with our feet back on solid ground. We tried to remove the stragglers without alerting the main horde. Our day started out okay, but quickly things went downhill. We were down to only three kitchen knives. And now we'd injured our hand in an altercation. Our tiny mistakes were accumulating and slowly eating away at our progress. With our hand out of commission and our weapon count teetering on empty, we made the decision to pull out the secret weapon. We gather as big of a horde as we can muster, as quickly as possible, and release our bottle of hellfire into the sky. Fire burned brightly into the night. 1,100 corpses of ash lay chaotically through the streets. We finally had a moment to breathe and eat, while we enjoyed the silent chorus all around us. We could finally loot the store we came here for, finding two spare engine parts, a jack, and a lug wrench. But our battles weren't over.
trying to push up to the gun store via the woods, but quickly came to the realization that this was unlikely to work. There was entirely too many zombies on this path. By our estimation, we'd have to fight another 500 or so just to make it there, and we didn't have enough knives to go around. We'd have to look for an alternative method. <laughs> Mind Flare? What is this, Boulder Skate 3? on the 28th day of pushing through this apocalyptic hellscape, another of our pointy friends had shattered, marking the 30th we've destroyed since our journey to our sister began. We were about to give up on our gun store desires and push off for Louisville. All we had to do was clear out these last few beasts. He just instant killed me. I mean, what can you do? It takes but a fleeting moment to change one's destiny. Our actions and choices shaping the path we walk. At the end of the trail, we ultimately face the consequences for each one. On the 28th day after 2,716 zombies, Salvador's story came to an end unceremoniously. Surrounded by the ashes of the fallen, we close the final chapter on the Bloodline Dash. As we journey down the trail of broken blades, we want to extend our heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you for being part of this odyssey. As we bid adieu to this apocalyptic tale, let the echoes of your enthusiasm and engagement linger like the whispers of wind through desolate landscapes. Your presence has been the heartbeat that breathes life into our words. Thanks for sharing this thrilling adventure with us. Until we meet again on the next narrative horizon, stay vigilant and stay alive. If you enjoyed the content and want to see more, make sure to hit the subscribe button. A like, favorite, or share is also greatly appreciated. If you have a suggestion for a future challenge, please let me know about it down below or by joining the Discord. Thanks and have a wonderful one.